Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about Mars that may have actually looked something like this only a billion years ago. So that's right, Mars may have had rings and it also may have had rings for a really long time because the new research suggests that Mars may have been a ring planet for most of its lifetime. Let's talk about this and welcome to the Math. A lot of planets in our solar system currently have rings. Most of them are actually the larger planets like Neptune, Uranus, Saturn and Jupiter, but we also know that at some point it's very likely that even Earth had rings, especially before the Moon formed. But none of the terrestrial planets in our solar system have rings today, and only two of the planets have moons, Earth and Mars. And not so long ago I've also explained why neither Venus nor Mercury have any moons anymore. But today I wanted to talk about Mars, because some of the recent research, which actually started with this paper published back in 2017 in Nature magazine, presented a really interesting idea of the evolution of rings around Mars and used that idea to explain both the existence of Martian moons and also the unusual parameter of one of its moons, which is actually kind of difficult to see here, but I'm going to try to show it to you. If you look at Mars from this angle right here, you'll notice that the moons are slightly misaligned. And even though the actual misalignment of orbital planes is only about 2 degrees, and most scientists have never really thought of this as being really important, the recent research suggests that this is actually a really good explanation for what may have happened around Mars in the last few billion years, and how the closest and the most massive moon of Mars, Phobos, may have actually transformed its partner and how it actually may have created the rings as well. So let's retrace things a little bit and talk about this paper right here, very recently released, that explains what may have happened around Mars. Now even though initially scientists thought that Phobos and Deimos, simply because of their shape and appearance, were captured asteroids, today we're pretty sure that they were most likely created when a somewhat large body most likely collided with the Martian surface creating both the rings, the initial rings, and also the initial material that then created the moons. We know this mostly because of the alignment of Martian rotation in comparison to the plane of orbits of the moons, and also because it kind of actually has been simulated many times, and the simulations seem to produce these moons, no matter how many times the simulations are ran. So essentially this material right here from the collision was very likely responsible for the initial formation of the, I guess you can call them, proto deimos and proto Phobos, the initial moons. And we also think that the initial formation was obviously a lot more massive as well. But with time, as the system evolved, some of the moons may have either fell back to Mars or may have been kicked out of the system. Although we're not entirely sure what really happened to uh, most of the material. But today we think that eventually all of this stabilized in two major shapes. One of these was the current moon Deimos, which is actually about seven times less massive than its partner Phobos, and that's the moon that most likely hasn't really changed much in the last few billion years. So we think that this is probably the older of the moons, and because of its location in the orbit, it's slowly moving away from Mars. And if you'd like to find out why it's moving away from Mars, check out the video I made where I explained why neither Venus nor Mercury has any moons. The tidal interactions here are very similar to the ones that our own moon experiences as well. On the other hand, because Phobos is so much closer to Mars, it actually has a very quick orbit of only over 7 hours, so it manages to orbit around Mars faster than the um, rotation of Mars. And because of this, the tidal interactions from Mars cause Phobos to slowly approach the planet approximately 2 centimeters per year. So within the next 30 to possibly 50 million years from now, it's going to approach Mars close enough to start falling apart and due to the tidal interactions, create another ring. In other words, it's going to create rings in approximately 30 to 50 million years from now. But the scientists behind this paper believe that this is not the first time it's going to happen. As a matter of fact, their observations suggest that the reason Deimos has a slightly inclined orbit is because it previously experienced the interactions with the much more massive moon that was circling around Mars. 
by using mathematical analysis, they were able to establish that by having a moon that's approximately 20 times more massive than current Phobos, and by having it orbit in a very specific location around Mars, the actual moon would most likely cause Deimos to change the inclination to what it has today. So they explain this unusual 2 degree inclination by having a more massive moon somewhere in between the current Deimos and the current Phobos. But because there is no other moon there, the only explanation here is of course that Phobos must have been, first of all, a little bit closer to Deimos, and second of all, it must have been more massive. But what happened to its mass? Well, that's where the Rini explanation comes in. So the scientists behind this paper believe that in the last few billions of years, this cycle repeated itself many times, and the cycle is basically as follows. Every once in a while, due to the tidal interactions, Phobos, or I guess the previous version of Phobos, approaches Mars close enough to then start forming rings. These rings, once they form, stay around Mars for a relatively long time, most likely millions of years, possibly even billions of years, but eventually some of them do actually come close to Mars and fall onto the surface. Other rings, the ones on the outskirts here, due to other tidal interactions, start to slowly coalesce into another object, kind of similar to, for example, this moon right here around Saturn known as Pan, that seems to have coalesced from the material as well, and may one day slowly make its way out of the rings and become its own separate moon. So this is sort of what we think happens to some of these moons and how they form. And due to the tidal interactions, at some point this Phobos, this newly created Phobos, starts making its way out to the outskirts, interacts with its partner Deimos, and then eventually starts repeating this cycle again, returning close to Mars, creating new rings, and then from rings creating yet another moon once again, restarting the cycle. So the scientists behind this paper believe that currently this is at least the third such cycle with Phobos now approaching its ring-making location in the next 30 to possibly 50 millions of years. And eventually it will create even smaller moon that will basically be like the child of Phobos. So this study suggests that current Phobos is basically like the grandchild of the original moon that was there that was most likely about 20 times more massive than the current version which according to the simulation here would make it roughly around three times bigger in size compared to the current Phobos. The radius here is about 30 kilometers in size, whereas the current radius is only about 11 kilometers. So in that sense, it's a pretty interesting story. And the main suggestion here is of course that Mars was mostly a ring planet for most of its existence. It was probably the only terrestrial ring planet in the solar system for a very long time, except for of course that one time when Earth may have had rings as well, and possibly even Venus and Mercury when they used to have moons. Neither Venus or Mercury can actually have rings anymore due to their very slow rotation speed, and in case of Earth, the only way for our own planet to have rings is if by some chance it captures an asteroid that assumes a very similar orbit to what we have here with either Phobos or Deimos. The chance for that happening is actually pretty low, so the more likely chance for Earth to have rings is actually if we end up making artificial rings. Which we've actually kind of been doing. When you think about it, the satellite formation, specifically the extremely large formation of the um, geosynchronous satellites, technically already forms a sort of an artificial ring around our planet. But that's obviously not as fun as the natural rings, which may have existed around Mars for billions of years. And this so-called cyclical Martian moon theory currently has quite a lot of support from the observations that we have, and specifically in regards to the unusual orbit of Deimos. Now it's obviously not super unusual, but it's unusual enough to need an explanation. The 2 degree inclination compared to the orbit of Phobos is actually kind of unexplained right now. And this theory definitely proposes a very very brilliant explanation, simply based on the analysis of what would have happened if there was a much more massive moon somewhere nearby. But will we ever be able to prove this theory? Well, as a matter of fact, we will. In 2024, JAXA, which is the Japanese space agency, is planning to send a probe to Phobos to try to collect some of the samples and return them back to Earth for studies. If these samples happen to be about 200 million years old and not billions of years old, the only possible explanation here would be that Phobos is indeed a kind of a grandchild of the original moons that were formed here that then recycled into rings and then created Phobos. 
Although it's going to take a while for us to get those samples because as you probably know, it does take a while to get to Mars and then to get back from Mars as well. And currently Japan is still trying to retrieve the samples from the asteroid Ryugu, but as of today, Japan has done an incredible job at retrieving samples from various objects. They're technically the leaders in that particular field, so if anyone is going to be able to do it, it's probably going to be them. And by the way, this is actually really cool, I wanted to kind of show you before I end the video, but this is what a typical solar eclipse looks like when Phobos passes in front of the sun on the surface of Mars. This was filmed by the Curiosity probe, and you can actually see the moon itself pass in front of the sun. This is kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. The size of the moon is actually really small, it's much much smaller than our own moon, but nevertheless it's close enough to planet Mars that you can kind of imagine it covers a pretty big part of the sun, and you can sort of see this, technically, every 7 hours, assuming that it aligns with the sun itself. So when I initially saw this a few years ago, this was actually pretty mind-blowing. Here's what all of this would look like if we were to really kind of zoom in on this and see this in a little bit more detail. So I guess until 2024 we're not really truly going to know if this is true or not, but the chances of this theory being correct are currently really high. The observations are there, the analysis is there, we just now need to retrieve a few samples to find out the age of the actual rocks on the surface of Phobos. But until we learn more about this idea, or until we learn something else about Mars, that's pretty much it. So sounds like Mars was, at least in the past, a much cooler planet than it is today. It may have had oceans, it may have even had potentially habitable conditions, possibly even life for all we know, but most importantly, it had rings. For a very long time. But until we learn more, that's kind of it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And also, maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.